Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan, I'm a software engineer at Job City, and today we're going to do a short tutorial on how to do a dark mode for a website using only CSS. I'm going to be introducing a couple concepts and I'll leave all the links in the description of this video with the documentation so you can read a little bit more if you feel like you need it. Without further ado, let's get started. So let's first introduce the concept of CSS uh, custom properties or commonly known as CSS variables and they work pretty much the same as variables in any development environment. There are just some rule sets that, we, that contain specific values to be reused throughout a document. When styling with CSS a large website, we get a large amount of repeated values which we can condense into a specific set of CSS variables to inject them on the properties throughout this styling of the app wherever needed. Let's look at a simple example. Let's say we have a website that contains an accent color that will be used in primary buttons, links, border of images, uh, all around the, the website. So let's create a file here, which we are going to name index.css. And let's say we have, I have some examples. So we have a primary button class, we have a selector for images and a link class. And as you can see, they all share one same color in this case is the this hex number that I have here. Instead, instead of having to define each color for each class and having to change it every time some styles change on the website, we can just use a CSS custom property and define them in a global kind of way like we do on any development language. The syntax for this looks something like this. We can just access the root selector of the document like this and we can define the variables. The variables have to needs to have this writing styling. So let's say we create an accent color variable, which is going to contain the hash that we're using or, or that we want to reuse in the website. So to access that from any part of any other CSS, we just do it like this. We just refer to the variable like this. So this is something that really improves the, the maintenance of this website because now if we need to change the accent color that will be used in the website, for example, we only change it in one place and it will be replaced all over the website. So you can find my, more documentation about this in the, in the description of this video. Okay, let's put this concept into practice. We'll build a small, simple website that will allow the user to toggle between a light dark mode and the end result of this tutorial will look something like this this is going to be a simple website and you will be able to toggle the dark mode only using css so let's start with the html of this file and we're going to call it just index.html and create a basic uh, html document using the help of vs code let's call this dark mode example and let's call or style sheet for the styles which we just created. We are going to reuse that one. In the body, I'm going to leave the resources in the description of the video with all the source code used in this project. So I'm just going to copy from another uh, from another another site. As you can see, we have an input which is going to be hidden. And this one is the one that is going to serve as a state for the toggle or for the current state of the toggle on the website. We have the, 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 the checkbox, which is going to be the toggle itself, the one that is going to be visible, and it's just going to be a, a label. And we're going to create the, the, the checkbox itself in a second. And just a, a little wrapper with the content of the site, which is just some text, okay? Let's start with our CSS. So first of all, let's add some basic styling to it. Uh, let's start by importing Montserrat from Google. So we have that font available. And then let's define some basic stylings for the body, for the H1 tags, for the wrapper, for the paragraphs, and for the anchor tags of the website. So we're using the font family for the entire body. We have uh, a, a display of flex and just some margins, line height, font sizes, and just some basic styling to make the website look, look good for now. 
we are not touching on anything that is specific to colors or, back or background properties at all, not at this point. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is create the checkbox, the custom checkbox that we're going to be using, and we will do this using a pseudo element keyword. Uh, in this case, we are going to be targeting the dark mode label, and we can do it using the before pseudo class. So it looks like something like this. We can as access the dark mode label class, and then with the before pseudo class, we can set a content, which in this case is going to be the hexadecimal Unicode of 2610. I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. This is going to be the unchecked uh, mode of the of the checkbox. We can do the same one, the same thing for the checked one, and we're going to do it like this. I'm going to explain this operator in a second. For now, uh, we're we're just setting the two the two states of the of the checkbox itself, and let's add a little bit of padding to the to the checkbox container. We can do it like this checkbox container and just add some padding of 1.5 rem. All right, so this is what we have at the moment. As you can see, this is not working yet, but we have a checkbox, a custom checkbox working. Now let's start working on the variables that we're going to need for our dark mode. Uh, for this, we first need to define all the custom variables used for the foreground and the background colors needed in, in our elements, and we're going to do it like we just did. So we're going to access the root and we will define two set of variables, the light mode of variables, which are going to be the, the default and, oops, and then the dark mode variables. And as you can see, there's nothing very important about this. This is your these are just going to be some colors and some definitions. In this case, the background of the container, the paragraph like test, and the anchor uh, colors, which we're going to, we, as you can see here, we're going to turn this anchor into some kind of bottom, or it's going to look like a bottom. And for the dark mode, we're going to do something very similar with a couple different uh, variables, but it's basically following the same idea. So we have a background color, a text color, which in the dark mode is different. We, we, we need to make it black so, so it looks, it, it contrasts with the background. We have a paragraph and the anchor, the colors of the anchor itself. Next, we select the checkbox container element that are siblings of the dark mode on the check state class, which will match the select checkbox state of the element. This is done using the sibling selector or the general sibling, sibling com combinator. And I'm going to leave the documentation for this combinator or, or this operator in the description of this video. We do it like this. So we need to select, in this case, uh, the dark mode of the checkbox whenever it's checked. And using the sibling com uh, combinator like this, we can access the checkbox container itself. What we're going to do is redefine the variables that we just defined for the light and the dark mode whenever the checkbox is, in, is on the checked state. So this will redefine all the variables that are important for the dark mode in this case. So for example, we can target the container background variable that we defined before, and we can reassign its value whenever the checkbox is checked in this case. So we do that like this. We just access the variable again. And this, in this case, we're going to use the container dark background. So what this line does is we are redefining the value of the container background, which is defined by default here within the light mode variables into the dark color that we will be using for a website. So let's put all uh, the other relevant colors here. And in the end, it's going to look something like this, okay? So all the rules we set in this CSS block will add as a toggle logic of the theme from like 
from light to dark theme and, and vice versa. When the checkbox is in its selected mode, it will toggle the theme and when unchecked, it will, it will go back to the base styles. Basically, all we are doing here is setting the default light color theme value to the new dark theme colors for both the text and the background. So with this logic in place, all left to do is just set the colors, the, the values of the colors in all the relevant places where we're going to need it. So we need it in the checkbox container. We can set the color to the variable, variable of container text um, and the background color to the value of container background. We need to modify the value of the paragraphs, the color is going to be the value of the paragraph light text in this case because this is going to be the default one okay and the last one last one is going to be the anchor same thing with the color which is going to be the value of the anchor on the light text um same thing for the background. So we can see here that all the values that are defined as part of the light mode variables, because these are the variables that, as you can see here, we're putting as color for the anchor, for the paragraphs, for the container, are the colors that we are seeing on the default, default kind of theme. When we toggle this, all the colors are going to be changed because all of these variables are going to be redefined with this selector whenever the dark mode checkbox is on the checked state. So the advantage of having a system like this is we are handling all the styling, all the dark mode theme of the website only using CSS. That makes, makes it very fast, very lightweight and very easy to implement and maintain. So yeah, I hope you guys find this tutorial useful for your projects. Uh, all the relevant documentation and the source code using this tutorial is going to be available in the description. Don't forget to like, to subscribe and to follow Job City on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. See you in the next one.